Okay, tonight I'm gonna unbox the Cobalt 10 inch pole saw and do a review on it. But first, let me talk a little bit about these three. I've got the pole saw, the uh, Cobalt Weed Eater, and the Cobalt 14 inch chainsaw. These are all in the Cobalt 40 volt max line of products. So the Weed Eater, I bought it about a week and a half ago. I actually bought the Weed Eater and the pole saw at the same time because Lowe's had a sale where if you bought two, you get a discount on one. So I think I got a $60 discount on the pole saw or the weed eater. I don't know which one they took the discount off of, but I bought both of them, both of them together and got a good discount. Um, the chainsaw, I bought it a couple of months ago. I've used it a lot at the farm, used it a lot in the neighborhood. It's been great. I went ahead and bought the weed eater and the pole saw because I had a really great experience with the chainsaw. I had to replace the bar the first time I used it, but I think that was my fault. But the chainsaw has been working great. I've run the battery and the chainsaw through, I think, 10 char fully charged and full discharge cycles. I've now run the, uh, the uh, weed eater in the last week and a half through probably three full charge and discharge cycles. And the, these, these two use the same identical battery, which is a four amp hour battery. The pole saw has a two amp hour battery, but Lowe says that since they're all in the 40 volt max line, the batteries are, intercha are interchangeable. So what I'm gonna do tonight is put the pole saw together, show you how it works, and then find out if the batteries really are interchangeable between the three. So let's get started. Okay, let's see what we got here. So how do we open this thing? By the way, while I'm uh, opening this, I wanna mention when I brought this home from Lowe's, the bar actually fell out of the box. So I don't know if the bar is loose in here or what. I stuck it back in, but I'm, I'm sort of curious to see what the condition is of everything in here. All right, let's lay it over. So that's a, um, the chain and the blade guard right there. Set those down here. There's the battery. Let's take a look at this. So this looks like it's the same size as the battery and my other stuff. It is, it's the same exact size, but this is a two amp hour battery. So let's compare it. These batteries are, are just about identical. Or the form factor is exactly the same. All right, so we'll set the battery down here. Pull out the saw. All right, so here's the bar. Uh, the bar was just sitting in the box. So I'm hoping the bar is not damaged. It doesn't look damaged. I don't see any dents or anything. When I put this in my car, the bar fell probably from a, uh, a four foot height down onto the asphalt pavement in the uh, Lowe's parking lot. So. Um, I don't know, they could have packed it in better than that. All right, put the box over here. The standard packing material. All right, so here's the charger. So let's compare that charger with my saw battery charger. Okay, so the chargers that come with the saw, the weed eater, and the... Um, 10 inch pole saw are exactly the same, identical chargers. So that's the one for the pole saw, that's the one that came with my chainsaw. They're both 80 watt chargers. So uh, everything should be completely um, compatible as I say. Okay, let's plug up the battery to the charger. So the battery goes in the charger upside down. So once you put it in, you have a blinking green light on the charger. All right, set that aside. So let's put the saw together. So on the saw, you have the control in, the battery goes in right here. This is how you turn it on. I don't really know what that's for. Um, so to turn this on, you've got these, sa this has a safety feature in that you've got this button right here. You've got to push it in from either side so it works with either left-handed or right-handed people. So I'm right-handed, so what I would do is push that button in with my right thumb and then pull the trigger with my index finger so you can see how to turn it on. You gotta push that button in before you can pull the trigger. If you try and pull the trigger without pushing the button, it will not come on. All right, so uh, the saw, if you notice, the saw's got this thing on it right here. Well, that's the bottom right there. So that's how it goes on the control handle. So you put these two together just like this. And by the way, let's see if I can hold these stable. There's arrows on here, so you line those arrows up, that's how it, that's uh, that's sort of an indicator to you to how to put it together. All right. So put it in. Tighten up this collar. 
And the first thing I can feel right now is that this is sort of wobbly. I mean, it, it, it's solid once you get it tightened down, but I suspect if you have this third section in or this, this middle section in, it's going to get really wobbly. So the, the saw is heavy enough that there's actually some bounce in it already, and I don't even have the middle piece put in. Let's put the middle piece in. I just want to see just how wobbly it is. Okay, so this almost looks like a pole vaulter's pole. It's extremely long, so I can, I think right off the bat, I think the weakness of this is going to be the weakness of the pole, the length of the pole. I know what's going to happen. I'm going to get tired of holding that up like that, trying to saw limbs. But when you need, when you need to cut a limb that's uh, 14 feet high, I mean, that, that's the only option you got. All right, so let's take it apart, take the center section out, and uh, put the battery in and test it out. Oh yeah, and I looked at the warranty. The warranty that comes with the pole saw is exactly identical to the warranty that came with the uh, chainsaw and the weed eater. So what it really means is they're going to warranty anything that is not subject to normal wear and tear. So, you know, if like tomorrow, if your trigger breaks, they'll probably fix it. But three or four months from now, they're probably not. You know, if, you, if you're using this up, you know, holding it way up in a tree and a limb falls out of the tree and it breaks the bar or bends the bar and it's no longer usable, they're probably not going to warranty that. You know, if you're using it and the bar breaks on its own without being hit or anything, or if, you know, just the weight of the saw breaks it, they may warranty it. I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to put the chain on the saw. And by the way, uh, if you're working on your saw, it's a good idea to wear your safety glasses. Um, also, if you're going to work on your saw or change the blade, take your battery out. Don't be dumb and, and accidentally let your saw get triggered while your hands are on it. All right, so here's the bar and the saw. Let me show you how the saw goes on the bar. So here's an up close look at the saw and this is the front, the front, the front, the front is in that direction. Okay. So you can tell there's sort of a cutting edge right there on the front side and the saw spins in that direction. Okay. So here's the bar. So the saw goes on the bar just like this. You have to take the bar off the saw to put the, um, put the saw blade on. So that's what it looks like. Uh, let's you see if I can get a better picture. So the, the blade goes that way. So if you look up close, you can see the front cutting surface is going in that direction. All right. So now let's take this piece off. And by the way, this piece on my uh, regular chainsaw, my 14 inch cobalt chainsaw, I had a problem with this coming unscrewed while I was sawing it would actually vibrate loose. So I put some Loctite on the uh, bolt here and that stopped all the, the vibration. So this is the tensioner. That's what you use to tension the chain. Okay, so here's how the uh, bar and the chain go on. So there's a long slot right here in the bar. You put that down on this main bolt, just like that. And then you, move, you position your chain around the motor right here, all right? Then you take this piece and put it back on. Now on this piece, there's a little round thing right there that goes into a hole right here. So sort of position that in the correct place and then just tighten it down. So now your chain is, is on correctly when it's not hanging. You see how I've got some slack here? That means it's too loose. When the chain is cold, you shouldn't have any slack right here, but you should be able to spin it. When, it, when the uh, saw heats up, the chain's gonna heat up and it's gonna stretch a little bit. And you may see a little bit of slack here that you can adjust with a tensioner. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, on the tensioner, it's hard to see. There's actually a plus and a uh, minus on here. I'm gonna turn it in the plus direction to take the slack out of the chain. And I'm not gonna tighten this down until I get my tension right where I want it. All right, I may have that a little bit too tight. All right, that's just right, right there. So now you gotta be able to turn the chain. 
All right, so the chain's turning. There's, there's very, very little slack there, so now I'm gonna tighten it down, which turns clockwise to tighten it down. All right, after I've tightened it down, make sure you can still turn the chain. So that's correct, that's correct. So the chain's still a little bit loose. I'm gonna tighten it down a little bit more. And this thing is sort of hard to turn. This tensioner is a little bit hard to turn. All right, so there's just a little bit of slack in it, which I think is just right. All right, so now you have to put oil in. So there's where the oil reservoir is. Any standard bar and chain oil will do. And of course they recommend you buy the Cobalt brand, but I don't. Okay, here's the uh, bar and chain oil that I use right there. Um, I've used that for years and years. It does a great job. All right, so we need to put some oil in. So we're going to put oil in here. Now, it's probably impossible to read on camera. There's a mark at the bottom. Let me put that back on. There's a mark at the bottom here that says men. So if you're holding this up vertical like that um, and you see your oil at the men level, you need to put more in. When you fill it up, you can lay it down like this. All right, so I'm, I'm actually gonna put something underneath here. I don't want oil on my work surface. All right. Now it's a good idea to use a funnel if you have one. I don't have one handy, so I'm just gonna be really careful. Pour it in slow. All right. Cap that off. Put that cap on. Make sure it's on tight and not cross-threaded. I have cross-threaded these before and lost all the oil while I was sawing. That's a bad idea. Okay, when I first set up the saw and I put in the bar and chain oil, I forgot something. And I, I did this clip after I've used the saw because I didn't want you to make the same mistake I made. Um, you notice I've got paper on my work surface. I usually keep a couple of rolls of thick brown paper in my shop or a piece of cardboard in case I'm working on something like this, just so I don't get oil all over my work surface. So what I forgot to do is to grease the bar. So if you notice on the end of the bar, there's this little silver thing. That's the center of a gear. There's a gear inside the bar that spins. That's how, you, that's how it makes sure that the chain can revolve around the bar. Well, beside that gear, there's a little hole right there and there's another little hole right there. You have to squirt grease into that hole. And I should have done that when I set the bar up and I just forgot about it. So I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. You can buy this grease at Lowe's or Home Depot or Ace Hardware, any, any hardware store that sells saws and accessories probably has this grease. This is made to grease the bar. Since I've already used my saw, I'm gonna go ahead and clean out that hole with a little screwdriver. And the hole does not go all the way through. It only goes to the gear. Let's do the other side. That gets the initial debris out of the way. So what's in there is um, dust and, uh, well, dust that's really wood dust from the, um, from the shavings that the saw creates. I've got some compressed air. I'm also gonna spray in there to sort of clean it out. All right, so I'm gonna open up my grease here. And this is really important to do. Um, and I gotta give credit, I, I did not always do this. I saw a video on Steve's Small Engine Saloon about it and I started researching it and realized, yeah, that's a great idea, I need to do it. Okay, so you can take the top off this little grease gun. And, and by the way, the way this works is, you just hold it in your hand and you push down on it. It pushes grease out of the tip and into the hole on the saw. And I'll show you that up close in just a second. But what I want to show you is you can refill this uh, grease gun. You can take the plastic top off. Inside there, there is a stopper. You can pull that stopper out. You can put more grease into it and then put the stopper back in. So you can reuse this so you don't just have to throw it away when, you're, when you've used all the grease. All right, so let me pull you up close and I'm going to show you how this works. Okay, here's how this works. There's the hole right there at the tip of my finger. So I blew it out with compressed air because I've already used the saw. You really need to do this before you use the saw. So you put the tip of this right there and you just push down. And it's sort of hard to do. 
takes five or six pushes and you're actually filling the, uh, the gear cavity in there with this, this uh, grease. Now on some saws you'll see it come, uh, come falling out the side. All right, now I'm gonna do the other side right here. See if I can get a good video. And all you have to do is push down on this grease gun and then it fills that cavity with grease. And that lubricates this entire, the uh, gear inside here. Let me get a better picture. Lubricates the gear inside. So you see when I squirted it in the other side, it came out this side, so. Um, and that's why I keep this brown paper because I don't want grease and, and stuff like that all over my work surface. But that certainly makes this spin a whole lot easier. That helps out a lot. So that protects your bar. So um, it's a good idea to always keep some of this grease on hand for stuff like that. Okay, now I'm going to put it together. Let's put the battery in and see if it'll solve. All right, line up the arrows. Push it together, tighten down the collar. And I'll tell you, this, this pole really concerns me because even with um, the two sections joined together, that's, that just feels really flimsy. All right, let's get the battery over here. So I'm using the uh, two amp hour battery that came with it. It's been charging for about 30 minutes. So now it shows I've got four bars, but on the charger, it uh, looked like I only had about half charge. So we'll see. So you have to put it in right side up. You slide it in there, pops in. If you want to get it out, you push this black button down and it just sort of pops right out, all right? Let's turn this sucker around. Take off the blade guard. Okay, here we go. Oh, safety glasses, almost forgot. Always wear your glasses. Make sure your area where you're gonna test is free of debris and stuff. So to turn this thing on, I'm gonna push in the safety button and pull the trigger. Let's get a good side view of it. There we go. Seems to run just fine. Now it's worth noting that um, the weed eater has a speed control. The saw does not, it runs at one speed. It's either on or it's off. All right, let's go cut some wood and see how it functions. All right, this is an oak tree. That worked okay. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the extension on and cut those two limbs in that tree, which are about 12 feet above the ground. So, let's see. Okay, I got the long bar on it, so I got the 10 foot bar on it, so we're gonna cut down these two limbs right there that are roughly 11 or 12 feet high.
All right, now I'm gonna cut a limb that's gotta be about 13, 14 feet high. It's way on up there. All right, let's do a couple more. They said just to come through here and trim all the low hanging limbs. So here's one over here that uh, has limbs low enough for a kid to climb up in the tree. So we're gonna have to cut that one. Things like this are a huge liability for neighborhoods. All right, let's see, where can I put you guys where you can actually see what I'm doing? Let's put you down here. Right. I've got the extension on here. type of tree that is it looks like an oak tree but it's got some sort of weird looks like a weird uh, fungus on the limbs all right let's do these couple of limbs right there put you guys down here where you can get a good view of what i'm doing hopefully the limb won't fall and hit the camera and i've got the extension on here So here's the one thing I've learned about the extension. It sure does bounce a lot. Now it works great, but you cannot put any downward pressure. You can't push down on it while you're cutting because it's just not gonna stand that amount of pressure. So here's the limbs I cut. So far it's doing great. I don't have any problem with it. I'm gonna come back and do that tree tomorrow. That's, I don't wanna get bit by a snake. It's too late to do that today. All right, I'm gonna get this one down. Um, this tree's dead. There's a big hole in the side. All right. So after cutting about 30 limbs, what I can say is the pole saw is doing great. I don't have any problem with it. I don't like how it bounces a little bit when you're carrying it, but when you need to reach something high, this definitely does the job. All right, let's see what else we got to cut. Let's take a couple of these limbs down off that oak tree. All right, here we go. That's enough for today. It's getting dark enough now where it's hard to see the cut. So here's the thing, it works great, but you cannot push down on it. When you're cutting, you have to let the saw do the cut. If you push down on it, it starts to vibrate and jump up and down and like it, it, it does this while you're cutting. So you cannot push down on the blade, but overall I'm happy with it. I've cut a lot of limbs this afternoon. Seems to be doing great. And uh, I don't have any problem with it. Um, so I guess I'm gonna keep it. When I first opened it and I saw how much it bounced around, I thought, you know, I'll test it out and then I may not keep it because I don't want something that's gonna bounce all over the place and create a dangerous situation. But I've cut throughout this whole bottom area, I think I've cut uh, maybe 30 limbs. Been here for about 45 minutes. I haven't had any problem, it's working great. So I guess I'll keep it.
So the pole saw did a great job. I cut a bunch of limbs. I think I cut like 60 limbs out of all those trees over there. I spent an hour and 20 minutes, made 300 bucks, paid for the pole saw. So I'm going to say the same thing about the pole saw that I said about the chainsaw and the weed eater and the two other cobalt videos I did. This is not made for industrial work. Uh, this this uh, pole saw does a great job. I cut oak, pine, sweet gum, and uh, something else with it. It did a great job. I have no problem with it. The only issue I have is not really an issue. If you put the extension in the middle and you extend this thing out to 10 feet, you cannot push down on it. So if you're holding the saw, you can't push down. You just have to hold it in place. And if you look on the front of the saw, there's these ridges right here. I don't know what those are called, but you put the, this part of the saw up against the limb that you're cutting and you just hold it there and you let the saw do the work. If you try and push down on it, the saw is going to kick back and it's going to start bouncing up and down like that. Now, I didn't have that problem with just, just these two segments. I only have that problem when I put the third segment in it, so I, I really don't care for that. But I have to say it did a great job. If you notice, let me take it apart here. It's got these two segments, which are about the same length. I really wish there was a way to take just the saw head and mount it closer to the battery. Or, or the switch. I wish you could make it this long because a lot of what I have to cut, you know, is only five to six feet above my head or away from me. So I wish they had done that, but I can live with it. I've got my chainsaw for that. So anyhow, it did a great job. Uh, let's see how much battery I've got left. So I cut for a solid hour and 15 minutes and it shows that I still got four bars on my battery left. So. I have no doubt that I could probably cut with this for a solid two hours, maybe two and a half hours, depending on what I'm cutting. I cut wood that was as, uh, you know, as thin as my wrist or as, as thick as my arm and uh, did a great job. I don't have any problem with it. So the Cobalt 10 uh, inch pole saw is a keeper. Um, it paid for itself. So there you go. All right, that's it. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.